Hello Angels and welcome to another YouTube tutorial. Glad to have you here. So we've been talking about, um, we've been working on CSS so far and now we're going to talk about the index. The index uh, focuses on the position and element is visually to the person looking at it. So let's say two or three elements are in the same position. How do we, how does the browser determine which one should show first and which one should be shown next or behind it, whatnot. So uh, we're just going to continue from where we stopped, set up, and yeah. So let me bring this, uh, this and yeah. Okay, so we have this for elements. I'm going to give them, so I'm going to say position absolute for all of them. And let's see what would happen. So position absolute, and there would say top 100 pixel, right? Um, let's say 15 pixels. No, let's say 50 pixels. So yeah, they will refresh. I can see they all moved to the same place. And what we would observe is that the last child is what we can see. So as you can see, Uzo is the last child in this particular situation. Now, the first thing you should know about Z-index is that the last child is going to be the one in front. The last child is kind of more important visually in this situation. When it comes to Z-index, the last child is always in front. So now it looks like, it looks like other boxes are not there, but they are there. It looks like other boxes are not there, but they are actually there. So I will show you what I mean. What we're going to do is that for each of the elements, we are going to give them different colors. So for, let's start with the second child. So we'll say the nth child, uh, number two, we'll give this background color, um, Backer color, let's see, red. Guess so what am I doing? Red. Then we'll duplicate this for. So we'll duplicate this. This is going to be third child, then B. So this is going to be last child. And then this one should be, let's say, yellow. Where am I putting it? And then this one should be green. All right. Okay, so now the last child is green. All right. Now what we could do is, let me show you that they are all in the same place. For this last child, I'm going to say the top should be, let's say a Let's just say 180 pixels. Yeah. Okay, so you can see immediately I brought this down. You can see the visitor right beside behind it. And that's because this is the next child. So I'm sure so where we keep up um, changing this top property, you would see other ones there. So that's what I'm going to do. So this, let's make this 160, this one um, uh, 140. Let's see how that looks like. So now you can see we have green, we have yellow, we have red and aqua. Now, now you could you can see they are all in the same place. So they are kind of all in the same place, but we saw it in front, then the yellow one, then which is greater so than the red one, then aqua. Z index allows us to change the order of these position, of these positions. So this can be the last job. This one that is at the back can come to the front. So whatever, it's a, essentially, this one has the least index as far as the browser is concerned. And what we want to do is we want to bring this to the front. So what we need to know is that the higher the Z index, the more it will be brought to the front. So I'm sure if you've seen things, if you're working on PowerPoint or Canva, 
I see things like bring to the front. What simply ha happening is that the Z index of that particular um, item was brought way to the front. So since um, let's start with the first child. We want to bring so I'm just going to duplicate this and change this to first child. And here I'm going to say the Z index should let's say give it a very high one. Let's say eight and we refresh i see what happens the last the 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 i was the first child which was the last on the v index was brought directly to the front was brought directly to the front if i want to um bring the second child directly to the front what i would do is give it a higher z index so z index nine or z index nine uh, so, so you can see the Z index is of this one as which is nine has brought it to the front. Okay, so the same thing will apply to if you do that to this one. I say ten. Yeah, so that is the basic idea. That is the basic idea of a Z index. You may begin to wonder when does this apply? Um, it will usually apply in a situation, let's say you have a nav bar and then you want to put something inside. So let's say, let's, okay, oops. So let's imagine we have a nav bar at top. I'm just going to say this is nav. Don't worry, I'm not putting anything in it. So nav and say background color and blue. Okay, height would be let's say forty pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we have that. Now let's imagine this was a really big page that is scrolling, um, that we could scroll. So I'm going to make the body like 4,000 pixel, and then I would make the nav bar fixed. But first, let me make the nav bar fixed. So um, position fixed, top zero. Then for the body, oops. For the body, I'm going to uh let's see body height would be 4000 pixels no not 400 4000 pixels so now uh, okay oops i guess uh, let's make it a left um zero okay why isn't it there oh uh -huh. I forgot to add a width to it. So let's just say width, um, let's make it 100% and say, so it should be there. Okay, yeah. So now you could see as the other elements are moving, it's coming directly above it. You don't want this to happen. It's your nav bar. You don't want anything to be on top of that nav bar. You want it to always be visible. So what we could do now is, since the Z index of this is um, 10, let's make it Z index and let's say 15, for example, and see what happens if we if let it down, we refresh, we scroll, see. Now this is taking more important compared to the other one. So yeah, that's it for Z index. Um, that's why it's important. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, catch you guys there. Flexbox, Flexbox makes it easy for us to um, create, create a layout of what we want our website to look like. It helps us to easily do that compared to how it was done before using just position and load. But with Flexbox, 
our life is way, 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 way easier. Flexbox is like one of the best things that has happened in CSS, if I must say so. And one concept that I want you to note is that there is a uh, Flexbox container and Flexbox item. So what the, the Flexbox container is what controls the item and where the items would be placed. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to create a Flexbox item. Just going to make use of section. And then I'll put this inside. Okay, sorry. I'll cut that a little bit. Save. Then in our CSS, I'm just going to remove every other one we've done before and just um, leave the first one behind. I see what that looks like. Okay, and they're still all in the same place. I'm going to remove this. Uh, we don't need that any longer. And okay, yeah, we don't need that any longer. So. Okay, so now we have these stacked on each other. Now these are stacked on each other. And the reason is because each of these div elements are blocked. They are blocked. So let's bring in the section and then make it a flex container as a section. So how, what do we do? We just say display. Then we say flex. Save and see what happens. So immediately we made it flex. That is the section flex. The section became a flex container. And immediately a section becomes a flex container. Every, it gives them, it puts all of them like in line, all of them on the same line. Like, so we call that a the flex direction is row. So this is a row flex direction. It puts them in, in a row, essentially. So it put them, it puts all of them, all the flex items in a row. So each, so with this, we can now decide to apply some properties to this container that would definitely affect the, the flex items. So first thing, let's see what I mean by, oh, it's in a row, it's in a column. So one, let's start with flex direction. So if we, by default, is <clears throat> by default it is row. So if I do that and I refresh. It looks like nothing happened. But if I change it to colon, see it goes back to what it used to be. So so it means now it's no longer so if you say flex direction direction row, it means you're putting it horizontally. But if you say flex direction colon, you're putting the flex items vertically. So that's that. Now the next thing, so let's just change it back to row. Okay, yeah, so changing it back to row. So the next important thing I would like to point out is justify justify content. So now justify content. Okay, so let me take it back to row first and call this. Let's then take it back to row. Mm -hmm. So justify content would affect how the items are placed vertic um, sorry, horizontally. Yeah, so like this is the main axis or the this main axis, this horizontal axis. That's what we are trying to change. Like how are these flex items positioned horizontally? Now I think it would be better if I make this, let me give this a background color so that we could easily see what I'm doing. Let's make it blue and see. Okay, so now we have a better idea. So now let me bring in justify content. Let's say center. Let's start with center and see. So now you can see it's bringing it to the center. So in this axis, this horizontal axis is bringing it to the center. Now there are other options we could say 
um, flex direction space between. So, so space between is spacing, putting spaces between it. So as you can see, this is going to the side. This is going to the side, and there's space between. Then there is space evenly. So space evenly would put even spaces before and in the middle and after. So the space here is equal to the space here, equal to the space to the space to the, the all equal spaces. Then there is space around. So you can see that for space around, the space in between is more than the space around. So you can see this is, so it's not, so it just puts a space around it. After space around, the next thing, let, I want to show you another one, which is flex start with. Flex start is like the default when we started. So if you see, everything is brought to the start. Then another, the next one will be flex end. Everything is taken to the end. That's what it looks like when it's taken to the end. Yeah. <clears throat> now, uh, let's deal with align items. So align items deals with how it is vertically. So to better demonstrate this, I would give the divs different heights to so that it's better to explain. And so let's so I'm just going to give the let's say the first and the last child. So that I think that'll just so just so that this is quick. The first child and then we'll say uh, height. I want the heights instead of the height. So let's make the height 100 pixels. Same thing would apply for for the last child. So this is height. Let's see what that looks like. So before then, let me remove this. Let's see. Okay. So now we can see how it is. Now let's. Put um, so let's start with align items center and see what happens. So you can see they are all aligned in the center. They are all aligned in the center. That's what align item center would be. So if we say align items flex start. That's what it was before, that's the default. We also have flex end. So if we refresh, you can see it comes to the base of how it is. So that's, those, these are the properties of aligned items you would usually, you would usually, usually, usually use most of the time. These are the ones you would usually use most of the time. Let's say for, okay, now let's switch the direction and we'll see what happens when we decide to switch the direction. Let me first remove this. So instead of row, let's put it in column and see. Now we have these. The justify content and the aligned items kind of the kind of flip how it works. It kind of flips immediately you make it column how it works which kind of flips. So now normally justify content works on the um what is it called horizontal axis but now it kind of work on the vertical axis. So let's see what I'm saying. So if we say center now let's see what happens. Okay because this okay let's in, let me let me increase the height of the section. So let's so that this let's say um, height of this section and I say six hundred pH. 
So now you can see that these items are in the center. If I remove that, you see how it is by default. So you can see there's a lot of space here. But immediately I made it center. It comes to the center. Because now justify content is kind of so because it is colon, this is in this this is now affecting the the horizontal axis. That's what it's uh, it's affecting the vertical axis now. Yeah, before it was affecting putting things in the center like this, but now it's affecting putting it like this. So or we'll call this the cross axis for it. Now if that same thing would apply when you say space between and um so you can see that's space between okay yeah that space between the reason why there's a space here is because uh this has like imagine top so of course it would not the divs has imagine top so if i remove that and i refresh you could see now the space between is really flushed to the edge so if you say space um, around, so the same thing applies like we explained when it was on the other side. Same thing is if you apply um, space evenly. Now let's see what happens when we use the aligned item. So aligned items would now also it flips from how it was before. Before uh, aligned items was affecting the the vertical axis now is affecting the horizontal axis. So now if we see center, it brings it to the center. Let's try flex end. So it takes it to the end. Flex start brings it to the start. So that's the basic idea for for um, align items and then justify content. That is the basic basic of how you would style things. So you could use this to easily put where you, you want your a group of elements to be in in your layout. Now another thing I would like to point out is the fact that Every flex item can also be positioned. Every flex item can be positioned. So now let's take a look at the first child. Uh, so you see by default, all the items are in position flex start. But let's say for some reason you want the second child to be here, you could style it on its own. So you, you could align only that particular element. Now let's let me show you what I mean. If I say div, and let's do an F child two, and if I say align self, and I say initially it is flex start, so let's make it flex end and see. So you could see only this particular element was taken to flex end. Now, so that's what I would want to. So with this, we come to the end of um, flex, flex, the flex tutorial, and this is just the basic idea of flex, and you could work with this um, from now on. Next, we could talk about the lead.